Without further ado, I want to bring up our keynote for this evening, Ms. Caroline Dunn. She's absolutely amazing, and I will let her introduce herself because I'm sure she can do a great job at that, a better job than me. She has so many accomplishments. Come on up, Caroline. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Caroline Dunn. I want to do a demo for you first because this is Facebook developers, right? This is a little thing I built in Spark AR. Have y'all y'all covered Spark AR in the last class, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So this is in honor of Easter here. And I'm going to, uh, and then now you can see my, my phone. Happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> All right, so that's my little Spark AR demo. I hope you enjoyed my Spark AR demo. Yes. Thank you. So thank you, Facebook, for having me. Thank you, TJ, for having me. I appreciate it. Good evening, everybody. My name is Caroline Dunn. Last month, I was on the cover of Hype because I was a top 10 finalist in an Amazon competition. I made the cover of Hype because I was the only female out of the top 10 finalists. Thank you. Uh, so I've been on the Amazon front page twice now. I was on the front page in December, and I was on the front page last month as well. Uh, also part of my introduction, I'm the first female president of the Wireless Technology Forum. Uh, I was president 2016 and 2017. It was literally a 12-man board. That's seriously, that's the board and me. And I, and I got to stand in front because I'm the president. Uh, but at Wireless Technology Forum, we realized that our ratio was 9 to 1. Our membership was 10% women. We had 10% women attending our meetings. We needed to make a change. So I started a group under the direction of Wireless Technology Forum called Women in Wireless. And I co-founded that with Melissa Sorrentino and a band of 12 founding members. And we actually have our meetings here at the park. This picture is taken right here, right over there, um, on the second Thursday of the month. So if you're here on the second Thursday, please do join me here for Women in Wireless. I also ran two STEM workshops. I was a teacher at two STEM workshops last year. Uh, these are programs for underprivileged kids. I have a little demo here. Or I have a little show and tell here. Who knows what this is? Is that a raspberry? Yeah, yeah, it's a raspberry pie. So um, I taught uh, girls, high school to middle school kids, how to use a raspberry pie and build a, their own Google Home to take home with them, and and also a computer. And they had to make a presentation of it by the end of the day. So they learned how to assemble and code in one day. These are underprivileged kids. This is part of my agenda to uh, give opportunity to those that don't have opportunity. The picture I'm going to show you is a picture taken when I was a senior in high school. It is not representative of what I was as a senior in high school. So I was Asian. I still am, I guess. I'm Asian. <laughs> and I was told that I was a geek and a nerd and I couldn't dance. And uh, so one day, I lived, a, I lived in the suburbs of Houston. One day I got in my car, I drove to the next town over, it's about 20 miles, and I auditioned to be a runway model at their mall. I, I went somewhere where nobody knew who I was. And I made the audition and I became a runway model that day. And that's my picture. Uh, so I didn't even tell my friends until after I, I was on the runway because they all thought I was ugly. I did a bachelor's of electrical engineering at Georgia Tech. I did a master's of electrical engineering at Georgia Tech. Uh, the ratio is real. A, at a typical class at Georgia Tech, there are 30 students, 28 of them are men, and two of them are women. And then, you know, my friends told me I didn't have any rhythm, so I tried out to be a Super Bowl dancer, and I made that audition. And I am a Super Bowl 34 dancer. <laughs> so. So I say all of this because I don't like it when others define you by your stereotypes. If I had listened to everybody that told me, I would be ugly. You are unique. Let's, let's remember that. Let's applaud ourselves. Let's remember ourselves because we are unique and we are not the product of what people's stereotypes of us are. We are ourselves. Now, the next time I'm going to throw up is in response to an article that's going around that's, that's gone kind of viral about how college is this big money pit and, you know, it's, you're just under a bunch of student loans, okay? But 
as I was considering, as I was in high school and I was considering my college opportunities and being at the economic level that I was in, okay, now, okay, money doesn't buy you love and it doesn't buy happiness, but money is important for, you know, like living and eating, you know, and that kind of thing. I looked at a chart that kind of looked like this. And it looked the same a long time ago when I was looking at my college opportunities. And if you have kids that are thinking about going to college, think about ROI, return on investment. How much is this going to cost and how much are you going to make getting out? So as I said, I was an electrical engineer. A lot of people ask me why I majored in electrical engineering. Do you know why? Because there's no heavy lifting in electrical engineering. There is nothing physically stopping me from becoming an electrical engineer. Trust me, I went through the program twice. And there was no heavy lifting in that program. Why are there not more women in electrical engineering? There's no heavy lifting, I promise. All right, so you're probably wondering how I got to the front page of Amazon twice now. Uh, it wasn't because I was an electrical engineer. Um, it was because Amazon put out a lot of information for free. And I just started digging through the sample code and just the free stuff that they were putting out on making skills, otherwise known as apps, for this thing called the Alexa. Y'all heard of this thing called Alexa? Mm -hmm. So they started putting out, hey, here's how you make apps for Alexa. It's called skills. And I realized all of their sample code was in JavaScript. Now, I went to school so long ago, and I'm an electrical engineer, so we don't really do a lot of coding. I went to school so long ago, I had never coded in JavaScript. Did that matter to me? No. I went on Google, and I typed in how to JavaScript. Then I started watching videos on YouTube called how to JavaScript. And I ended up creating an entire portfolio of apps for Alexa. And that is how Amazon found me. They, they happened upon one of my skills, and they said, we want to feature you on the front page. Would you like to be on the front page? I said, sure. And then kids, too, approached me, and they said, we want you to write our Baby Einstein skill for Amazon, for kids, too. And I'm the one who authored the Baby Einstein Storytime app, if you ever want to try that out on Alexa. And I'm pleased to announce, right, right before I came here tonight, I found out that I passed the ADBS certification for Alexa. <laughs> So this test, um, this test came out in January. It's a beta, and they just gave me my results today. So I'm really, I'm, so, I'm super excited about that. All right, so if, I, if I'd like to leave you with something, I'd like to leave you with obsessed is just a word the lazy use to describe the dedicated. This is me after running 26 miles through New York City, otherwise known as the New York City Marathon. It took me four hours, 50 minutes, and 20 seconds to run 26 miles through the streets of New York City. You know how many people tell me I was crazy when I started that journey? Probably everybody. Yeah. yeah. Everybody. Uh, so if you'd like to contact me, here's my contact information. Uh, thank you so much for having me.